Hey there, and welcome back to the Homemade Haven. Today I want to take you guys back into the garden and show you an update since our last video. here over the past couple weeks. We ended up getting sick one at a time. I had jury duty for a few days and just a bunch of craziness. So here we are. We're back and I'm ready to show you guys what's been going on in the garden. We actually had a really dry spring for our area and it was pretty mild, not very hot, which is kind of unusual for here as well. But once July rolled around, it was like summertime is here. The weather um, took a shift. We have had thunderstorms pretty much day and night. It has been hot, very hot. And um, the garden has just really taken off. So I do have some harvesting to do this morning. So I thought I'd take you guys along for a quick update tour and also show you what we're getting out of the garden this time of year. So welcome back to the garden. As you can see, we have got some wood chips on the ground since our last video. We actually had a friend who was working in the area, taking down some trees, and they said that it was easier for them to come and drop them on our land than to take them all the way back to town. So we gladly took them off their hands. He brought us a giant truck bed full of beautiful cedar wood chips. So Robert and I came out here, we laid down the tarp on the rest of the ground and went ahead and put these cedar chips out. And we've been really happy with them. They are really helping with the weed suppression. We still have a little bit of work to do around the edges. Um, we don't have our permanent fence up still. Um, we're waiting on some tree work to be done, but our friends that are taking our trees down have dropped off equipment and so we're just waiting for the ground to dry a little bit and once they get started and get the area cleaned up we can finish this project once and for all so i'm going to take you guys to the very back of the garden and start back there and work our way back towards the front so it's a little bit different from our last tour let's start here at the very last bed in the garden we have our okra which is taking off it's going nuts we've pulled a little bit off here and there um, but like i said once the weather really warmed up the okra has really started blooming so um, i won't be surprised if there are some giant okras in here <laughs> that i've missed because i did not pick yesterday and we've had rain this whole week all day and all night so i can imagine there are some giant okras in here that we're going to have to harvest this morning and then we have some of our flowers in here. We've got our nasturtiums and, and some zinnias that we planted. They are being very shaded by the okra plants right now. So I'm going to have to cut some back so they can continue to get some sun. But we originally brought those in for our pollinators so that they would be attracted to our cucumber tunnel. So they'd come in here and go ahead and help us pollinate. And it has worked splendidly. This tunnel is full of pollinators. And we have been getting so many cucumbers, like so many cucumbers. I don't know how many jars of pickles I've made. I don't know how many bundles of cucumbers I've given away. And we are still up to our ears in cucumbers. So let's go in and check it out. I wish you guys could hear the buzz that's going on in here. There are so many honeybees and bumblebees, and I've even hung a hummingbird feeder up in here because I started to notice hummingbirds flying around. And so now we have hummingbirds that come in here as well. We 
also have a bird's nest at the very top of this tunnel. We had a mockingbird that kept trying to put a nest in our green bean tunnel and because of the way that it grows, the very top of the green bean tunnel has most of our green beans, so I couldn't allow a bird's nest to stay in there. But with the cucumbers, like I said, we have had our fill of cucumbers, and as long as we get one or two a week that we can snack on fresh from this point on, I don't really mind if a bird puts a nest in here. So they have been helping us keep down on some of the bug pressure, so our birds are welcome to stay in here with us. Now as you can see, some of these leaves are starting to get some kind of fungus on them. Um, probably because we went from so dry to so wet so quickly, um, these leaves have gotten some, I don't know if it would be blight or mildew, I'm not really sure. Um, and we've also had some bugs in here, some leaf-footed bugs. I've tried really hard to keep the bugs down low. I've been out here with my cup of insecticidal soap picking bugs off left and right but once summertime hits it's like you really don't have much control at that point so you do the hard work in the early spring and hope for the best during the summer but like i've said we had our fill of cucumbers so i'm not really worried about the little bit of damage that's on here um, we'll continue to pick a few for the rest of the season and just kind of let this tunnel go and this will probably be something that we pull out here in the next few weeks so that we can grow something for the fall here instead anyways. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest our cucumbers this morning and then we will go out and check these ochre plants. cucumbers so if you have any good ways to use up cucumbers other than pickling we have done sweet pickles we've done dill pickles we've done sweet and dill pickles we've juiced the cucumbers we've eaten them raw like I said we've given them to family I'm about to start throwing them at neighbors when they walk by please take them so if you have any other good recommendations for cucumbers please let me know in the comments below I'm debating whether we're even going to grow cucumbers next year. Maybe one plant, because I do like them fresh throughout the summer, but I don't think we're gonna need any more pickles for the next couple of years. Let's get into these okra and see how they're doing. I just looked at this plant twice and didn't see this big guy. Look at that. They're the same color as the stalk, so they do blend in very well. Okay, so not many okra today, just a handful, but there are several smaller pods that I can tell will be ready probably by this evening, if I'm being honest, with all this rain that we've had. But, um, I want them to get a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna leave them on. But like I mentioned, you have to check okra like twice a day because in the morning it could be just a little tiny thing and in the evening it could be too big that you're not even gonna wanna eat. So I'll be back out this evening to check on this okra and see if it's ready. I hear my little hummingbird friend out here. She's like, can you please get away from the feeder so I can come eat? So let's move on to the next bed. So after our cucumber tunnel and okra beds, 
we have our pumpkin bed. I don't know if you guys watched our last garden update video. Um, this pumpkin bed has been out of control. It's growing wild and crazy. And I actually came through and cut a bunch of it off, pruned it so that we could have the ground opened up um, to put our tarp and our wood chips down. And that's probably been about three weeks ago and it has already started to vine back out of the bed. So um, it's looking really good. It does have some bug pressure. I'm actually looking at five of those leaf-footed bugs. I really hate those things. Oh, and a squash borer. Let's take a look. Bad news, not great for squash or vining plants. Those bugs make me so mad, but you know, this is nature. They live here too, and they serve some kind of purpose. I'm not sure what it is. It's not to help the garden, but anyway, this pumpkin bed is doing great. Our pumpkins have started turning orange and we are almost ready to start harvesting some. So I'm super excited about that. And these vines that have taken off outside of the bed have started putting on new fruit. So I think we're gonna be in the pumpkin business here shortly and we're really excited. Oh, sun's coming out. So on to our next bed. This was the one side of the original green bean tunnel that the beans didn't end up growing on. So I ended up just planting wildflowers here for our pollinator friends and also to help cast some shade into our green bean tunnel so that while we're inside we have that nice shade to keep us cool. Um, these wildflowers have gone wild, obviously. We've got some marigolds and some sunflowers and some cosmos and they are actually all starting to bloom and blossom now. So this is gonna be so beautiful whenever they are in full bloom. Our green bean tunnel did not take on this side like I mentioned before. So only one of our green beans actually sprouted on this side. So I don't know if it was a soil thing or sunlight thing, but um, we have one little bean that could and he's He's done pretty well filling in this side over here and coming up and over. And this side of the tunnel did take off and they look really good and healthy. There are a bunch of green beans that are hanging that I'm gonna have to collect this morning. And on the outside of this bed, we have our lima beans. I've actually never grown enough shelling beans um, to have a great harvest off of. We planted, let's see, two, about 10 or 12 lima beans between this bed and the next bed and they are hanging full of pods. Um, they aren't quite to the point of harvesting just yet. I've been feeling the pods to see if they feel like the size of what a lima bean should be and they're not quite there yet but I am excited because I think that we're going to have enough between both of these beds to actually put some up in the freezer and have a couple meals off of. So. I'm really excited about that. This was kind of an experiment for us this year. I usually do the pole beans, um, like what we have growing here, but I wanted to try something different and um, so far so good. All right, so while I'm showing you guys the green bean tunnel, I noticed that we have a visitor out here. Let's go check him out before the cat gets to it because it could either hurt the cat or the cat could hurt it. I'm not sure, let's come take a look. Oh yeah, we don't want the cat getting close to this guy. That is a snapping turtle. Hello there. Here's Belle, our hunter. Meow. So if you're unfamiliar with snapping turtles, though all turtles are really cute and we always do what we can to save turtles. Snapping turtles can actually be really dangerous. They can bite your finger clean off <laughs> if you give them the chance. So I'd really hate for the cat to get up on it. Uh oh, she's found him. Here we go. 
Bell. No, no, Kitty Cat. No. So all I'm going to do is just try and push this guy towards the ditch. Oh, he's putting his brakes on. Ooh. Look at that. Yikes. Not very nice. I'm telling you. Got a beak on him. Stay back, Key Cat. Bell. Go on. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera down so that I can move this guy successfully and not get the cat or myself hurt in the meantime. There you go. You angry little fella. That's the way we wanted him to go. Away from the house. No, no, Kitty Cat. Psst. Bye, Mr. Turtle. So, back to our garden tour. We are at the very front of one side with our herbs. And I'm not going to go through all the different herbs that are here. I did that in my last video and my plant with me video. So if you're interested to know what all is in here, go back and watch those videos. But these are doing really well, very happy and no complaints. Let's go across the way to the other front bed where we have more herbs. These are all doing really well. Our deal has gotten wild and out of control. We actually let a group of swallowtail caterpillars live here um, because we know that they're going to in turn come back as butterflies and help us pollinate our garden so we don't mind sharing some of our dill and obviously we had plenty of it um, we've been getting enough off to make our pickles with and that's really all that we ever use dill for anyway so the herb beds are doing great on to the next bed we have the mirroring bed of the opposite side so we have more lima beans here and more green beans that are going up in our tunnel here. This side, both sides of green beans did grow successfully. So this tunnel grows a lot of green beans, um, which I have a lot of picking to do. I picked two nights ago. So that's kind of about the rotation I'm on this time of year is every two nights we are collecting about 20 quarts, I'd say of green beans so it's it's a job in itself just green beans alone so once you add the other vegetables on top of it um, our canner and dehydrator and all of that is just constantly running inside of the house but we are super thankful we um, we planted this much on purpose because we wanted to have this much food to store and put away so we're very happy with it so inside the green bean tunnel I have my step stool here <laughs> because as green beans grow and mature towards the bottom of the stalk, they stop putting out so much fruit and really most of the fruit grows towards the end of the vine. So as you can imagine, that puts everything at the top of the tunnel. And I can reach it, I can stand and grab it, um, but to give my neck and shoulders a break, I bring my step stool out here to help me collect my beans. All right, so we got a pretty decent 
green bean harvest this morning. This is my 23 quart water bath canner um, and it's about halfway. So the other day we filled this pot about three quarters of the way and it gave me seven quarts of canned green beans plus some extra that couldn't fit into the jars. So I'm assuming this is probably about five more quarts that I'll be able to um, put up sometime soon. My goal is to get 50 quarts of green beans put up in the pantry this year. It was a very noble goal whenever I set that number now that we're in the heat of summer and having to pick about every other day. Um, 50 quarts seems like a really long ways to go, but we'll see. We'll see how long we can hold out and, um, and how many green beans we can get this season. On the other side of the green bean tunnel, we have some flowers. We've got some borage and some cinnamon basil. I did plant some garlic in here. I'm not sure that they have done very well. I think this bed stays a little bit too wet for garlic and garlic really doesn't like to be too wet. Um, and then we've got a couple of pepper plants. Our peppers have not done too great. I think because our season has been unusually cool thus far. Um, now that the hotter temperatures are coming, I feel like the peppers are starting to grow a little bit better and um, put some flowers on. So maybe we'll get some peppers this season. We'll see. Now I did notice that in this bed, I've got some mushrooms growing and I have people ask me all the time, is it okay to have mushrooms in my soil? What does that mean? And the answer is yes, it's great to have mushrooms in your soil because that means that it is breaking down and decomposing. That's what mushrooms are. They're a sign of decomposure. So there might be things that are still in your soil that have to break down to become a better quality soil. So whenever you see mushrooms, that means that good things are happening underneath the soil and they are nothing to worry about. Obviously, I wouldn't go and collect them to eat on them. You can do your studying and research to find out if they are edible or medicinal or usable. But um, a good rule of thumb is if you don't know for sure, just leave them alone and let them do their job. So on to our next bed here, we have our tomatoes. We showed you guys in the last tour video of how we built these trellises here. And the goal was to lower and lean these vines. So as the tomatoes grow, you trim the leaves off the bottom and the fruits off the bottom as they ripen up and you let the vines just lay in the bed like so. And you just keep lowering more string to give it more support as it grows taller and taller. Well, because our season has been kind of unusual, our tomatoes have not been ripening at all. So we have clusters of fruit that are now at the bottom of the vines that are laying on the soil, which is not a great thing because that's kind of like an all you can eat buffet for the insects that live there. Um, but they're not ripening yet, but they're still growing tall. So we need somewhere for them to go. So this system, I would not count it as a win just yet. Um, it's done great for our cherry tomatoes. Our cherry tomatoes are ripening and doing just fine, but our bigger paste tomatoes and slicer tomatoes, I don't know that this is the best system for them. It would be better if our bed wasn't so tall, but our bed being two feet tall doesn't give us a lot of wiggle room in between the soil and the top of our trellis. So we might have to figure out something different for next year. This year, I'm just kind of letting them flop and do their own thing and hoping for the best, hoping we get some ripened larger tomatoes, but if they don't, not a big deal. We'll readjust and try again next year. We do have some tomatoes to go ahead and pull off this morning. Now, usually a good rule of thumb for harvesting tomatoes is to harvest them in the afternoon after they've been in the sun all day because the sun is going to reduce the amount of water content that's inside of the tomato and it will make them sweeter. Now, if it is raining a lot like it has been here, we go ahead and harvest them as soon as they start blushing. So as soon as they start putting on any color, I just go ahead and take them off because the amount of 
rain that we get so quickly will cause these to bust. And I'll show you what that looks like. So you wanna go ahead and harvest them before the rain has a chance to bust them like this. These are still edible once they're busted, but they definitely don't last as long on your counter. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and eat them the day that you harvest them. Now, as far as other vegetables, like cucumbers or things that you want higher water content, um, picking first thing in the morning, even better if you can get out before the sun comes out to pick those, they're gonna be a lot cooler more crisp and full of water and a lot less chance of being bitter. But fruits that you want a little bit on the sweeter side, less water content, pick in the afternoon if you can. So all of these not quite ripe yet tomatoes that I am picking, I'm gonna put in a windowsill inside. So as long as they've got some access to sunlight, it doesn't have to be a lot of sunlight. It could just be filtered sunlight through a window in your kitchen or wherever. Um, these will continue to ripen and they will turn bright red and be just as sweet as they were if they ripened on the vine completely. All right, so I think we're good on tomatoes for today. Let's move on to our last two beds of the garden. You may recall from our last garden tour video that I mentioned something about our watermelons feeling like they were gonna take off and start overflowing like the pumpkin bed. And lo and behold, check them out. They are growing out into the walkways. I've been having to come through and clear the walkways so that I can still get through the beds um, but they are loving this weather and the water. Um, and we have several large watermelons inside of there that I'm super excited about and cannot wait to taste them. And then our last bed of the garden, we have our sweet potato bed that is looking lovely and lush and just happy. Um, we still haven't gotten to our last two beds here because like I mentioned, we still have some tree work that's gonna be done and hopefully as soon as the, gr the ground dries out again we can go ahead and get that done and move on so we can complete this garden project all right so that's it for our garden tour and harvest today i hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us in the garden it has really blossomed and bloomed and has been producing a ton of food and this is just such a beautiful space i'm really happy with it and i'm really happy to share it with you guys. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are growing a garden and what zone you live in and what you are pulling out of your garden now. Are you guys having drought? Are you having a lot of rain? What is it like in your area? Please let me know. I'm curious to find out. If you're interested to see how far this garden has came since the very beginning, be sure to check out the playlist that we have entitled Gardening and see just what this space has come from. That pretty much wraps us up for today, so we will see you guys on the next video. Bye.